it's become apparent that we've got another problem. And thanks to everybody that commented on this yesterday. We was talking about this melon plant. And I noticed that the leaves have got a bronze colour to them. And some of them are looking far from healthy. And it just happens to be on this melon plant that's been doing so well. But we also noticed there was a lot of webbing on stems and leaves of these plants. And apparently that's caused by red spider mite. I'm not sure if this one has actually gone too far because virtually every leaf is discoloured. So for this plant, it could well be too late. But it doesn't stop us making a video showing people how to treat that if you catch it early enough. And from research that I've done, red spider mites love places like greenhouses. A stable climate that's really warm and they thrive. But they reproduce so quickly. From the eggs to an actual adult, then capable of reproducing its own eggs, only takes about two weeks. So by the time you see any webbing on your plants or damage to your leaves, you'll have generations of spider mite already on that plant. And as I've noticed on closer inspection, they can do a lot of damage in a very short space of time. If we take a look at these leaves, you can see straight away that they're all discolouring, they're all damaged. And that's pretty much every leaf on this plant now. Because we never noticed it happening in the first place. And also, that webbing. By the time you see this webbing, you've already got a large infestation on your plant. And eventually, your leaves start to look like this. They're basically dying back. We've got quite a lot of plants in this greenhouse, as you can see. So, the first thing that we need to be doing is taking this out of this comfortable environment, which these spider mites love, which is a nice, dry, warm greenhouse. One thing that spider mites really don't like is changes in airflow. So when you've got an infestation of these on an house plant, you could put a fan next to it so it gets changes in airflow, which is going to be disruptive to spider mites reproduction, but it's not going to get rid of them. And that's why spider mites are such a massive problem. There's loads of ways that you can treat them. You can use natural pesticides. You can use a change in environment natural predators like ladybirds and of course chemical sprays which for me is always a very last choice if a choice at all so the first thing that we need to do with this plant is take it out of this greenhouse and if we take it out of the greenhouse because we're constantly getting windy days that's one thing that we've done that disrupts the life cycle of these annoying little pests but another thing they don't like is rain and it just so happens that july with one of the rainiest months we've had in years. So if we take this plant outside, that's two things we're doing and slow down that reproduction at the same time because it's gonna have natural predators like ladybirds that's gonna start picking them off. And ladybirds can get rid of at least 100 spider mites per day. So if there's any ladybirds out there, they're in for a treat, looking at the amount of webbing that's on this plant. And obviously they can spread from one plant to another so that is why we need to get it out of this greenhouse straight away. Always cut your losses if you've got no other choice. But it's not going to stop us trying to save this plant. So first thing we'll do is we'll take it outside and then we'll blast it with hose pipe. Because it's not a sunny day. We're getting changes in temperature, which is something else that spider mites don't like. Option one, isolate the plant away from all your other plants to stop that spread. Change that environment so it's perfect where we live because we're going to take them out of this nice warm greenhouse and we'll put them outside in that wind and rain and then we'll blast them with hose pipe and try and knock off as many of these annoying creatures as we can and then we'll make an homemade pesticide that you can spray on your plants if that infestation hasn't gone too far. So before anything else let's get this took outside. And now we've done that, hopefully that infestation hasn't spread to any other plants. So the second thing that we need to be doing is checking all those other plants and then taking action to prevent that spread if we've got one. So first thing I'm going to do is blast it with a nose pipe, at least knock all those cobwebs away and hopefully knock off a lot 
with these irritating insects at the same time and then we'll just leave it out here. I'm making sure that I get under all leaves as well. Well, that's one thing that's upset that perfect environment. So now I'll just leave this plant outside and it can get a bit of wind as well. It's about time this year that that weather, instead of irritating us on a daily basis, did us a favour. So wind and rain is not a natural environment for these creatures to thrive in. So we'll leave it out there. Another thing we can do is make up a natural pesticide. And this works for aphids as well. The only problem with using these pesticides, natural or not, is you need to be careful not to spray it on your flowers. Because if you spray it on your flowers, then pollinators are going to get in contact with that mixture and it's not going to do them any good at all. Always remember as well, if you've got a small infestation and you're blasting them off with your nose pipe, always do it on a day like today quite cool and overcast otherwise you're going to start another problem if that sun comes out and it's going to scorch your leaves anyway as far as i'm concerned that plant's staying outside now i cannot bring it back in here due to the degree of damage that that plant's already sustained we've obviously already got multiple generations of spider mite on that plant if we make a natural pesticide it's really simple to do we just need a container that holds a liter of water and what we're going to do is we're going to add a tablespoon the vegetable oil to that. Then a tablespoon of washing up liquid. Ideally unscented. And then we just need to fill that up with water. Then I'll just give that a shake to mix up these ingredients. And then you've made yourself a natural pesticide. The oil is gonna make that mixture stick to those plants for longer. And that soapy water is gonna get rid of quite a lot of these creatures. There is one downside to it. It won't get rid of any eggs. The eggs will still survive that's already on that plant. So what you need to do is treat it with this. Then blast your plant down with clean cold water and then reapply because you'll be killing the adult mites by doing that but not the eggs but the more you do it the less eggs are going to get laid by reapplication so eventually you'll get rid of pretty much most of them and if you put that plant outside natural predators will probably take care at rest you could also use rubbing alcohol but you need to dilute that down as well so dilute it down to 25% rubbing alcohol to 75% water Again, that will get rid of spider mites, but it won't get rid of eggs. So I think your best bet in this situation is to isolate that plant as soon as you spot it. And hopefully you'll spot it a bit quicker than I did. And you can save that plant. So just as something extra, I'm going to go and spray that plant outside with this mixture we just made up. And beyond that, at this particular stage, there's not much else that I can do. So when you spray this, you need to spray all your leaves and under your leaves as well so just do them all individual it's not so difficult on plants like melon because the leaves are quite big and even though i think this might be a bit of a lost cause for this plant i'm doing it anyway if nothing else it's a demonstration for people that might have a smaller infestation but as i was saying anywhere that you see little buds that have got flowers on them, try and avoid them so it doesn't arm your pollinators. Thank you very much to Pete Barrett for that donation that you made yesterday. I really do appreciate the donations that we get because that money goes towards buying extra stock that we need to make these videos on a daily basis. Thank you for that generosity Pete, really appreciate it and I'll see that that's put to good use. So at this stage we've done everything possible that we can now. Whether that plant survives or not is anyone's guess but because of the things that we've done just over the last 10 minutes 
have made that a really uncomfortable environment to what that little creature's used to. It's going to get rained on because it's England and it's July. It's going to get wind hitting it every now and again and we get gentle breezes and we get moderate winds something else they don't like. We've blasted it down with clean water to remove as many of those cobwebs as we can. It's going to be now under attack from natural predators like ladybirds and of course we've applied that natural pesticide which is going to slow down that reproductive cycle of these creatures. So now we'll just have to see what happens. Will it survive? Will it not? And if this plant don't survive, at least now we know we've got quite a few things that we can do to control this little pest, if not get rid of it completely. If you're interested in seeing other videos like this in future, please hit that subscribe button, press that notification bell, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.